Today, we talk about convertibles and why Spook doesn't like them. Wet sanding, huh? No fingerprints? Good day to rob a bank. Yeah. Just kidding, folks. Yeah, just kidding. kidding. <coughs> I have to put that disclaimer every time. Yes. You know? Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> kind of in my zone. Yeah. So I'm debugging. Good. So I'm debugging. The secondary panels. Yes. Okay. So actually, you can sort of see it. I had a fly land right there on oh, the last man. coat, and he walked all the way over here Look at and that. Died. Yes. Look at that. You can see his little footprints. Yep. So. That's okay. It came out. Okay. I have a remainder of a leg still. Well, <laughs> remainder of two legs still to do. Right there. Adds protein, huh? Adds protein. All so right. No big deal. Even the bugs like my paint jobs. <laughs> well, it does look kind of luscious. Mmm. -hmm. It mm. tastes like orange. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, so since you're on a Carmen Ghia, I actually have a question that came uh, in. Sure. It's good timing. I right? like questions. Did this come from the... Uh, from YouTube? Yeah, it was on YouTube. Okay. So, yeah, guys, if you have questions, throw it in the throw, comments. Throw in the comments throw section, it in, man. The, in the community page or under a video. Stump and we'll the find spook. It. Oh, no, don't stump the spook. Yeah. <laughs> I've only had one guy do that, actually. Yeah, you had to give him a t-shirt. Yeah, it was a personnel thing. So who was the <sighs> first guy in charge of VW production or something? And it was, like it was a, a tough question. I, well, it was an English dude, yeah. general or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> All right, question. Okay. So, what are we looking at price-wise to convert a hardtop Carmen Ghia into a convertible? That's too much. Too I wouldn't, much? I wouldn't do it. I flat out wouldn't do it. Why? Um, I know you don't, you're not a huge fan of convertibles. Well, they always leak. Um, yeah, they leak. The second thing is, is, like, go buy a convertible and then fix that one. Really? Um, too much? It's just for what you're getting, yeah, unless you're just going to make it a coupe. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even consider that one way or the other. It, it's just, nope. Okay. It, it's just you've got too much structural reinforcement you've got to do. I mean, it can oh, be done. Yeah. Um, but by the time everything's said and done, uh, just buy a convertible. Okay. I mean, uh, you know. All right, and that's the second follow-up question then. And we've kind of answered this before, but uh, we're going to ask. Okay. Overall... All things considered, what is the best year of Carmingia? Whichever one you like. <laughs> are there some that are kind of held in higher esteem than others? Yes, low lights. The early early production cars. I I don't remember off the top of my head uh -huh. when they started production. I've slept since the last time I looked. Um, they. Uh, I personally like the sixty nines, uh -huh. and the reason for that is you have the IRS and the ball joint set up, and it still sort of has the old look yeah um in 68 they still had swing axles um but they went over to a live axle in 69 okay and the electronics aren't too complicated so if overall not desirability but as far as build quality and simplicity i and looks the 69 all right um you know i i also like 65s and and 68s but this one's actually a 68 yeah but then the main difference between these two cars is one's an irs and one's a swing axle mm -hmm. so uh, with the irs yeah, i happen to like the irs uh, set up a little bit better mm -hmm. so uh, just engineering wise all right so well there you have it that's the update there we go so, there we go what are you working on so I aside am... from you debugging. Been, yeah, debugging. We talked about that. You so, got to fly. Yeah, so what I'm doing right now is, is you'll see little Pretty minor, little minor scratches like in here. 
Yeah. Um, this is either 800 or 1,000 with an aluminum block. Yeah. Um, so, as you guys remember last week, I was talking about we have a custom aluminum block. Was it last week or the week before? I don't, I don't know. Remember. Show anyway, the nice people what you it's, got. It's in here. So, <laughs> this is one of them, and then I've got a smaller right, version slow of down, this. Slow down. Flip it over. So, this is a Dura block with a piece of quarter inch aluminum on it. Yeah. And then we polish the crap out of that side so it's flat. Yeah. And I've got a little one about yay big that I use for the work I'm doing right now. So, okay. I've, I've got a little bit of a run line, which is kind of normal in the air, so I'm just cutting that out. Yeah. And then add a little bit there, a little bit there. All right, do it. Do what? Do a little. Do a little what? Do a little dance. Get down tonight. So, one of the things, guys, your paper should be soaking for a minimum of a couple hours. I usually, if I have a polish job going, I usually have an active um, water bucket going with uh, fresh soapy water. Um, and I usually let it sit overnight, and it really hydrates the paper. And it won't really cause any damage to it. Um, you can leave it in there for days as long as you change out your water every now and then so you don't get stuff growing in it. <laughs> Don't want to polish with algae, huh? Yeah, and you know the the first primary cut, that to me is the one that's most important. That's the leveling cut, because at some point the the paper will just kind of move around the topography of the surface and dull out really quick. Yeah. Um, and you really won't get any good cutting action. So if you get nice long, and you notice I'm going X pattern on this, I'm going back and forth, and I can actually feel where it's snagging. Hmm which tells me that's a, that's a low spot in the paint. I'll show it to you here. I usually have an air hose for this, but... Now, you can kind of see the differentiation in the shininess. So there's a lot of shiny here, and there's like some dull up here. So this is where it's starting to cut. And even though... If I went up the next thing, I could actually polish out and it would look beautiful, but you still have that little bit of paint wave in it. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to eliminate, and this is that first primary cut. It takes the longest, and this is actually where you can get yourself in trouble. If you cut too much, you're going to have to either do a blend repair or repaint. Okay. Not that big of a deal, but right. you generally but don't like to do it. Prefer an not to have to. Pre prefer not for an uh, unforced error. Yes. And... I've actually done this. I've done this twice now on the main body. I actually had an unforced error. Yeah. So I got a little cocky and a little overzealous. With yeah. The... So it's like on this, I'm just being real careful. This is actually so. This is actually already taking me a couple hours today. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you guys hear about like you know the godforsaken expense to go do one of these, <laughs> well, you know, it, it, I had 22 hours in the booth total. Yeah. And that's just for the color and, and oh, yeah. clears and stuff. So, uh, you know, with, with that, and that's just in the booth time. That's right. not doing any of this. So, and, you know, you can knock out a nice paint job right off the gun, but you're going to have a little bit of, of variations of the paint. I just don't, it, for me, it's just not acceptable. Right. Um, so I remember you saying, like, how you became a really good... Oh, because I was, I was a really lousy painter. Because I you didn't, first started. I didn't know what I was doing. I had Harbor Freight guns. Ooh. And they didn't spit worth spit. And, well, they spit a lot worth spit. <laughs> but their patterns were uneven. The spray the spray patterns, you get too much, too little. Yeah. And, like, one of the first cars I ever did, it uh, actually has tiger stripes on it if you look really closely. Ooh. So I can see it. Nobody else can. Yeah. But so you got really good at polishing. I got really got it, good at color sanding and polishing mm. um, because that's stuff I could control and work with. Yeah. You know, and, you know, now my polishers cost almost as much as the paint guns I'm using. Mm -hmm. So you can level up, folks. Always yeah. get the best tool that you can afford to use and that you don't have to throw away after one use. That's Harbor a good Freight, thing. Uh, yeah. they're hit or miss. Yeah. All right, show me what else is going on. Uh, we're going to be doing a video on this one, actually. Really? Um, so this one, we had a request to do a color sanding video. Yeah. And I think this would be a good one because it's a nice flat panel. Should go fairly quickly. We'll do it in time lapse okay. so you guys can get to see it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any of the narration on it or not because it's pretty much doing a lot of this. So, <laughs> I scratched with different it, and then paper. I scratched it, and then I scratched it. Then I scratch it some more, <laughs> and then I change direction and scratch it, and then I throw away that newspaper or that paper. Hey, Darren. Hey. What's going on? How are you? 
And we're good. We're good. Show the nice people what we got going on in sunglasses, the shop. Sunglasses in dyed in the rain. In the rain. Well, this what? is one of those things. There, you want to see air cold custom? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, available on the website. Raleigh's body is, is mounted to the yes. chassis. That's oh, yeah. We got a video of that. So Big that'll achievement come up. this week. We did get a video of this. This one. is awesome. Oh, Miss Riley. So it's, uh, he's putting his bolt it, pulling it down now. We set it on there yesterday, so we're lining her up and bolting her down and we're going to start putting her together so great i'm going through making a list of parts that we we don't have that we need and getting some parts tomorrow that we need to pick up and we're getting the front windshield and we have to go pick it up they won't ship glass so oh. <laughs> several things like that so it's uh where's that one ed's oh okay your dad's and yeah so won't ship glass we're gonna go pick up sr because we had to make a trip down there for some other stuff anyway all so, right well good timing um Let's see what else is going on. We're we're in a holding pattern on several things. Yeah. The rain didn't help us out. We got some stuff going on out here. I've got a. Uh, I think I don't know if we saw those seats. Those are the seats that go in Miller. So the blue oh, nice. Super Beetle. That's his rear seat there. And uh, very nice. So he's getting that done, and that's uh, interior wise work. We're I think last week. Did we have the the beam on the ground on Herbie? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. we did already. So yeah, he's waiting on some parts, and we'll put him back together. So out right here we have a bunch of welding going on. This is Mr. Herster's car. We got two Beetles. There's one in the back that's in the same look. Yeah. This is a '60, and we got a '57 oval back there, and they almost look alike. Thank and you. Uh, but uh, doing so a lot of metal work. Josh is doing a bunch of metal work right now. We're placing a bunch of parts. I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. And this is going to be the next yeah. one up to go to the paint booth. So. Cool. All right, what you doing? Ooh, look at that. Yeah, Russ. You make things, that look easy. Russ Doctor. The Russ Doctor. Mm, there we yeah. go. Well, we're replacing the uh, rust portions that were behind the bumper mounts. Okay. Rear bumper mounts. And then the uh, body mounts, too. They're rusted really, really terribly behind it. Um, we're going to have to cut that out. As you can see, we've got, we got the... A piece to replace it. I don't know that I'm going to use all that because it's a little excessive. But, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll use what we have to to make sure there's no rust. All of this looks really good. It's just back in behind the, the mount itself. It's just completely rusted out. Yeah. So okay. we're going to do what we can as far as fixing all that good stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's looking good. Yeah, it is. It's working out really well. I was really pleased with the way everything turned out. So we'll keep plugging forward. Good. We haven't scared you yet, have we? No, uh, no. <laughs> it, it's actually getting better and better because I'm beginning to learn the vehicles a little bit better. Yeah. And it, it's becoming more second nature and a lot easier to work with. So. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I do a little bit of it all, but this is this is my bread and butter. Yeah. Tomorrow morning he's gonna jump off that for a minute and put the wiring harness in Riley, which would be a brand new wiring harness on a brand new car, so it'll be fun and so. Oh, yeah. Instead yeah. of always troubleshooting the old wiring yeah. from a 60 year old bug, it's got a different color wires in front to back. Hey, what about I mean, that's fun too, but. What about the rusty bus, man? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we finally got the floors welded in place. Okay. And uh, I've got the engine bay all sorted out, ready to go. So uh, we'll, from here, I've got a few more welds that I need to make now. Oh, I'm looking at it. Um, but uh, the top, we're fixing to move to the top, put the drip rails in. All the windows get ready to, you know, for the opening for the rag top and all that good stuff. So we're real, we're getting somewhere on this thing. Nice. I'm, I'm excited. So yay, Rusty! Yeah, yeah. Yay. All right. Well, you guys know what to do. Bye, nice, nice people. Bye, nice people.